In this demo, I will show you how to configure DHCP on a Cisco router and validate the process using Wireshark Capture. So let's get to it. For this demo, I'm using EvenG, where I have two routers, R1 and R2, acting as clients, and I have a DHCP server. So note here that even if the icon used for the DHCP server, it's a server icon, in reality, this is a Cisco IOS router. The IP address of the DHCP server is 172.16.11/24, and no IP address on R1 gigabit 00, and no IP address on gigabit 01. But I do have an IP address on router 1 gigabit 01, which is 192.168.1.1 slash 24. The first part of this demo is to see how DHCP works when the client is directly connected to the server. So in our case, what happens when R1 boots up and requests an IP address from the DHCP server or DHCP router as we call it here. So let's hop into our terminal. So at present, I don't have any configuration on gigabit 00, zero on R1. So as you can see, no IP address in here. The first thing I'll start with is to add the required configuration to support DHCP server on this Cisco iOS node. So the first two things that I will add is range of IP addresses I will exclude. So I'm excluding 172.16.110 and all the way to 120. And this, you, you can do it and you don't have to do it. All depends in which IP addresses in the range that you want to assign, you need to have excluded uh, out of the DHCP scope. So your DHCP server does not lease addresses that already been used by other servers or hosts. And then I will exclude a specific IP address, which is 192.168.11. This address is the address on R1 gigabit 01 facing R2. So I don't want my DHCP server to assign later on this IP address to R2. And now I start configuring my DHCP pools. So I'll start with a DHCP pool for R1. So the configuration is RP DHCP pool and you name it. I'm naming it R1 DHCP. And I set the network that I want to have as a scope to be leased. So it's 172.16.1.0 and it's a slash 24. And then I will assign another pool for R2. So IP DHCP pool R2 DHCP. And th this, this name you can choose for yourself. I'm naming them R1 DHCP, R2 DHCP. So I recognize which is what. So I'm setting the network. 192.168.10 and it's a slash 24. But I'm also in this case setting the default gateway. This will become clearer later on when we do the second part. So this should normally be enough for me to start testing DHCP lease on R1. Now I go back to R1 and I want to set the IP address so it gets it from the DHCP server. But before I do that, I will actually start a capture, a packet capture here. So we can dive into what is happening in the process of DHCP. So I will capture on gigabit 00 on DHCP server. So going back to R1, I configure the interface so he obtains the IP address from DHCP server and the configuration is IP address DHCP, as simple as this. So once I hit return, let's see what happens in the capture. I'll just stop the capture so we can dive through this. So 
So the first thing you see here is the discovery message received by the DHCP server from router R1. So what we see here, the source address is 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 because R1 interface does not have an IP address yet and the destination is clearly a broadcast. And then you get an offer from the DHCP server back to the client. So the source address is 172.16.1.1. And if you remember, this is the IP address on the server. And the destination address is a broadcast also. You can see the source and destination ports used. They are both UDP 67 and 68 for source and destination respectively. And then the client will have to respond with a request. This is where, when the client actually makes a formal request and sees, first of all, that there is no, in, in the LAN, there's no conflict, there's no duplicate IP addresses. So yes, he's making the formal request to the server and say, yes, I would like this IP address. Source address is still 0000, and it's a broadcast. So let's just jump in here, see what happens under this DHCP request message. You can see the client MAC address, and this would be gigabit 00, 00 on router 1. We'll check that in a moment. And you can see several options here for DHCP. So option 54 here, you see the DHCP server identifier, which is the DHCP server IP address, and the requested IP address. So this is the kind of candidate IP address that the DHCP server is offering to the client. Let's quickly double check this MAC address. So if I go to And you can see here the MAC address is the same MAC address used or seen in this Wireshark capture, which is the client MAC address. And the final step in this process for DHCP is the ACK. So this is when the DHCP server acknowledge and, and confirms that this IP address is formally leased to the client. So let's go up and here we can see the client IP address. Earlier, something popped in the log message on R1. And you can see this message here. DHCP address assigned interface gigabit 00, zero assigned DHCP address 172.16.1.2 and the mask host is R1. So. Our IP address has been assigned by DHCP server to gigabit 00, zero on R1, as confirmed by here. If I come out and I do show IP interface brief, you should see here that the IP address is listed, as you would normally see it if you assign it manually, but here you see that the method is DHCP. So this is the first part of this demo. Now it gets more interesting. So we need to do the same thing before R2 on gigabit 01. So the challenge here is once we enable RP address DHCP on gigabit 01 on R2, R2 as a client will normally send the DHCP discovery messages, but these are broadcasts. So once they hit R1, R1 being a router, remember that routers drop broadcast messages. So this discovery messages from R1 will be dropped and the DHCP server will not hear from R2. So nothing is going to happen and R2 will just keep on sending discoveries and these will be dropped by R1. So let's put this to the test. If I go to R2 and I enable the address as DHCP, So IP address interface gigabit zero one RP address DHCP. I 
I've closed the previous capture and I will open up a fresh one here. So what we need to configure on R1 to mitigate this issue with the dropped broadcast messages from R2 is a, is a command that will allow broadcast messages to be forwarded to R2 as unicast. So essentially R1 will becomes a relay. So let's hop back into R1. And the command we're going to add here is IP helper address. And then the address that should be added here is the address of the DHCP server. So when the broadcasts are received, before I hit return, I'll just go back to the drawing. So once the broadcasts are received from R2 on this interface, gigabit 01, they will be forwarded by R1 to the DHCP server as unicast. Also, before we add anything on R1 interface gigabit 01, we need to ensure that this range, this subnet here, is actually known to the DHCP server. So we need to add a static route in this case to keep it simple for 192.168.10.24. So hopping back to the DHCP server. So I will add an IP route to 192.168.10 and it's a slash 24. And the outgoing interface is 00. So the route is pointing at this interface. Normally when you adding static route, on a LAN environment or on an Ethernet environment, it is always preferred that you put the next hop IP address. But in this case, because this IP address is known by DHCP, it is not very wise to use a, a definite IP address because this could change in the next lease, for example. Or if I run the demo uh, once more or renew the lease, I could end up with a totally different IP address. So this is the reason why I'm using an interface. So this in place here, now I can go back to R1, add my RP helper and check what's happening on the Wireshark session. So it took a little bit of time here, but as you can see, first of all, you can see that an IP address has been assigned to gigabit 01, and that's 192.6812 slash 24. Let's go back to the Wireshark session. So this is our discovery message here. But this is different from what we have seen earlier where we had a broadcast. Here we actually have a source IP address. This is 192.168.1.1, which is essentially this IP address here on R1. So this is where the broadcasts are actually relayed from R1 to the DHCP server as unicast. The destination is the DHCP server. Going back to the offer, we can see that it's from the DHCP server to the router. So it's not back to the client, but it's to router R1 again. and the formal request, again from R1 gigabit 01, and finally the ACK. So here I can see a MAC address for the client, which is the MAC address on gigabit 01, but on router two. So as you can see, this is the MAC address here. So an interesting thing to, to check, remember that we when we set the configuration for, let me just run the, uh, we, 
Remember that when we set the configuration for R2, for the pool in R2, we did set a default router, which is 192.168.1.1. And this is the RP address of R1 gigabit 01. So the effect of adding this, if you go to R2 and you do your show RP route, you can see that a default route has been created and is pointing to 192.168.1.1. So to double check that we have connectivity here on R2, we haven't added any root routing. We haven't added any static routing apart from this dynamic default route that was created when the lease or the IP address was assigned to R2. So let's see if we can actually ping the server the DHCP server and is successful. So this is basically how you can configure DHCP on a Cisco router. So clients on the same LAN can receive IP addresses like we have done for R1, but also when the DHCP server is on a remote network. And we have also seen what needs to be configured when the as in the case of R2, separated by the DHCP router by router R1, where you need to add the IP helper address command on R1, turning R1 into a relay agent effectively. So I hope you have found this session interesting and informative, and thank you for watching.